So just folding again, or yeah, I mean, I, I think you should kind of take advantage of some of these three bet spots once in a while, just passing on a lot of them. But uh, I mean, you were playing the session, so you probably had uh, you know more info, more feel for the game flow. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, like the, I don't really think I played like great this session. I think I played okay. Mhm. Mm but I mean, you know, whatever. Can't really play perfect always. No, nah, I mean, uh, we wouldn't be making a video at all if you play perfect, <laughs> right? Exactly. So, I think I probably called her with the queen nine suited. Like, I don't think it's the worst because this guy is so bad. Uh, I mean, I think it's reasonable just to call and just try and, you know, make a hand against him post-swap or bluff him post-swap. Like, don't have to ever worry about being squeezed. We're getting, you know, decent odds and probably an overcall. You know, our hand plays well multi-way. Yeah. Just... You know, try and go out of your way to find as many ways you can get involved with, like, the weaker players. Cause, I mean, that's where the vast majority of your money is coming from, so. Uh, you know, it's not a big disadvantage being out of position against someone if they're, you know, just not very good. Okay. Okay. So here we get three bet in two spots, so what were you thinking here? I think in the bottom right, I probably four bet, because I know Sipital, and I know he three bet a ton. Uh, okay. Here against Doss Boot, um, you can flat, but if you flat, like your hand just looks like what it is. Yeah, we talked about that before. I mean, I feel like people uh, aren't able to balance like flatting ranges here, and I'm not saying I'm able to. It's really hard, like you know, because you want to be able to four bat bluff sometimes. So uh, I don't like flatting here. It's probably really close, but it's just a weird spot where I think we always show up with something like king-queen suited, you know, ace-jack suited, ace-queen suited, maybe tens or nines. You know, uh, I think if you, you know, think about like a game plan where you're able to mix in, you know, flatting like aces, kings, ace, king, stuff like that, mm -hmm. maybe you could work this in. Or if you have a good read on him in three bet pots, but uh, I'm not like a huge fan of it. So I would probably just fold here most of the time. I think I, he made such a big three bet, so. I think if we're deeper, like 150 big blinds plus, I might lean towards calling. See, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of tempting to think that way, but the fact that you're deeper, like if he's good or aggressive, it's just going to make life even tougher on you. Because you're not like uh, winning, you know, a tuner big blind uh, stack or something when you flop a king on a king high board against him. It's true. You, and you're not just going to flop like a flush draw or like, you know, uh, a straight draw or two pair or something all that often and be able to get value from it. So, you know, I think people fool themselves a lot of times into thinking it's necessarily, you know, like more profitable. If we're in position, you know, it's a whole different story just because uh, obviously, you know, we get to decide, you know, when we want to get to showdown, like we have more profitable bluffs, all that good stuff. So I think it's a, a reasonable fold here, like. It's hard to four bet him because he made it so big and he doesn't even have a full stack, so uh, it's tough to even bluff there. Plus, like, this guy five bet jams so light, too. Like, Okay, so do you uh, four bet him wider for value? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Me and him, I swear we flip, like, five times a day, um, which sounds ridiculous, but, uh, yeah, no. I mean, you should try and turn those flips into, like, you know, 70-30s. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that's good information to know. So uh, we would probably never want to be forbidding hand like that unless we're wanting to call it off. And, I mean, uh, I can probably count on, you know, one hand the number of times I've gotten, you know, 100 big blinds in with king-queen calling and been happy. Yeah. But, so here we decide to check back again on this flop. Like, uh, I think you're, you know, ch checking back and giving up too much with these hands. Like, if you're opening his hands, you know, we're just never going to show them down or rarely going to show them down. And, I mean, this is a good board, you know. Uh, how many hands can possibly call us here, you know, besides a nine or a king or diamonds? Sure. I mean, uh, he seems pretty tight, but, uh, I mean, what are the hands he's going to show up with in the blinds calling a raise? Probably, like, I mean, bigger broadways, some bigger aces, and, like, decent pairs. That's pretty much it. Yeah, and I mean, he's pretty nitty, so, like, I, I don't think he's going to play back at us very often, so it's not like we're worried about just getting raised when we see bet here. And even then, like, why would we care if we get raised? Just, we have six high, you know? It's it's not a big deal. 